Good evening and hello everyone. My name is Payal Tandon and I will be your host today in this webinar in which we are going to talk about how is it that you can a sentence correction in order to get to that 90th percentile in sentence correction so that you can get to that target score that you've been aiming for. With me, I have Shraddha. She is our resident subject matter expert. She's the one who responds to your questions on GMAT Club and on EGMAT forums uh, single-handedly, any questions with regards to sentence correction. Okay, So definitely feel free to ask her questions when we are into the session, um, because I may not be able to take all the questions that you ask me. Okay. Um, I also have Sandeep. He is our, res he is our resident uh, GMAT strategy expert. So any questions non-SC related that you have with, with regards to how is it that you should be preparing for the test? How is it? What is the? What are your target scores? That how is it that you should be creating your study plan? Definitely uh, feel free to ask those questions um, through the Q and A pod, and I'm going to explain the Q and A pod when we move into the presentation pane. Okay. All right, so this is a very application oriented webinar. Now, I don't expect you to know everything about sentence correction because this is an introductory session. But the main thing that I want you guys to take away from this session is that how is it that you should be preparing for sentence correction? How is it that you should um, approach questions um, from, from, from sentence correction section? And because it's an application oriented webinar, we are going to, I'm not going to be teaching you any concepts. It's primarily how is it that you should be solving sentence correction questions. So for that reason, we want you to have certain uh, background in certain concepts. And that's the reason why we shared um, these concept files with you, verb ing modifiers one, verb ed phrases, role of different verb ing words, and verb ed modifiers. Now these are basic concepts that help you understand how are different um, constructs of, um, of English language utilized in order to communicate meaning. So if you had a chance to go through these, the, these concepts, well and good. I'm pretty sure that your learning will be uh, indicated as we solve the questions here. If you were not able to go through these concept files, these are part of your free trial. So definitely log into eGMAT at your own, um, uh, um, at your own convenient time. And, and, and look at these concept files. You'll get to learn a lot. Okay. Now, every weekend we conduct webinars. In fact, tomorrow, um, the way today we are talking about sentence correction, tomorrow we're going to be talking about number properties. And whatever we learn about number properties with regards to how is it that you should be approaching uh, number properties questions, you will be able to apply across the board for all of quant questions. So. If you haven't registered for this webinar, definitely click on the register now button. And I can share these links with you again by the time we get to the end of the session if, if, if you don't get to register right now. Um, likewise, next Saturday, we're going to be doing reading comprehension webinar. Again, I'm going to be, um, I will be a host in, in both of these sessions. And I'm going to be talking about um, next Saturday, how is it that you should um, read a passage in order to understand everything from the passage so that you can answer questions um, very, very comfortably and accurately. Okay, so definitely register for these. Now with this, let's try to understand you all better in terms of when is it that you are taking the test? What is the level of urgency at your end? So if you haven't as yet put in your responses, please do so right now. And again, seasonality of GMAT uh, shows up here. When I was uh, when I conducted this webinar back in December, December um, 7th, I noticed that quite a few of you were taking their test within the next 15 days. But now I think uh, because the round because uh, the, uh, the application season is kind of winding down, most of you have taken the test um, or are preparing for the next round now. So yes, yeah, so I can see that that you're taking majority of you have not taken majority of the the largest segment here, 35 percent of you have not taken the test date yet. Um, and there are quite a few of you who are who are taking the test more than 45 days um, later. And then some of you, um, and then I would say about what, 17, yeah, about 36% of you are taking the test within the next 45 days. So um, again, regardless of what segment you are in, you're at the right place. Um, so you will, you will get to learn um, as intended over here. So I will also ask you another question here. How many of you are retakers? 
are first time test takers and are currently taking mocks and neither. Now when I say that you're currently first time test takers and currently taking mocks, uh, that means that you have prepared for the test. Um, let's say you're done with 50 to 60% of the test uh, preparation. So about 30% of the class is composed of retakers, okay? All right. And, okay, good. This just helps me understand how much of background do you have in sentence correction in general. All right, so now we're going to move on to our presentation pane. So things are going to take a couple of uh, seconds at your end to, to stabilize. So it, so it is going to take a couple of seconds at your end to stabilize. So the minute you start to see or the moment you start to see what is your target GMAT score on the screen, please click on this yes button here in broadcast results. Sorry, in, in, in answer piles questions. Um, all right, sounds good. And also get my video here. All right. Okay, so, and let me get the poll in which you can put in this, uh, the answers to the answer to this. What is your target GMAT score? We'll get a quantifiable result here. All right, so I see that um, the largest segment here is 50, more than 50% of the class um, is targeting between 730 and 760, which is good. Um, if I were to add 730 to 760 and 770 plus, then that number is 70%, so that's really good. Now, for those of you who are targeting between 710 or 720, um, the next slide is going to be for you, definitely. And for those of you who are targeting between 600 to 700, um, the first two segments, I am I'm hoping that you that that is your target score because because you are pretty much set upon uh, what kind of program you're applying to and you know where pretty much uh, what are the GMAT requirements for those programs and you are you are um, aiming to be. Um, way above the average or, um, and the median GMAT scores for those schools, okay? But the next slide that I'm going to talk about here is going to be, um, is, is going to make sure that people who are aiming for a 730 plus score know what is at stake if they don't get to that score. And for people who are aiming for 710 or 720, I would want them, the 20 of you over here, to think, to rethink about your target score, okay, because there's quite a lot at stake there, okay. So why should you aim for a score of 730 or higher? Or in other words, why is a score of 700 not enough, okay? And I want you to answer that question here. Why do you think that is the case? And I think because, um, because you have, uh, because more than, because around 70% of the class today is targeting the 730 plus, I should be able to get good answers here. Better scholarships, yes. What else? Competition is high at 700 range, absolutely. More opportunities and scholarships. Too many Indian supply, you need to stand out, yes. Better colleges, absolutely. There's one thing that I haven't seen uh, so far in the, in the responses. All right, so I'm gonna give you uh, three reasons for why is it that you should be, you should target a score of 730 plus. The first one is, which a number of you have um, kind of alluded to, top B schools, top 25 B schools now require, okay, I'm all, almost saying require a score of 730. The median scores at most of the top B schools have been increasing steadily and they are the highest that, that they have ever been. So definitely you require a 730 plus. What used to be 700, I would say 10 years back is now 730. Okay, so that's that's one big reason. If you want to get an MBA from a top B school at, there is a very big reason um, for why is it that you should be um, as aiming for a for an MBA from from top twenty five uh, B schools. Okay, all right. Next one. More than fifty percent of scholarships that are offered by U.S. universities or universities in in Asia or Europe go to students who score above 730. Now this stat over here, the $350 million scholarships, 
That's the amount of scholarships that are offered just from the USB schools. The same trend is there for, for European schools, for, for Asian based schools. So half, more than half of this money goes to people who score above 730. So which means a direct inference for that is that you stand higher chances of earning that scholarship if you score above 730. And that's a direct ROI. Okay, that's not even something that you have to look towards in the future to, 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 uh, to, to realize. The third reason, which I didn't see a number of people mention, was that if you today, um, if you uh, get an MBA from a top B school, from, from top 25 uh, B schools versus from second tier or third tier schools, the delta in the earnings that you realize after you graduate has been more than has been has been more than ever okay and that delta alone over a 10 year period would amount to half a million dollars okay so that is the realization of the ROI that you're going to have over a 10 year period and all of this is possible if you score if people who are aiming for a 710 or 720 if you push that target score to 730 and all of this is very important for each one of you who's right now aiming for a 730 plus but doesn't have that solid conviction that okay this is why i need to go and aim for that 730 plus and again it is a hard it is a hard journey i'm not saying that that is going to come easy but if you have this stronger motivation um, for that goal you will be all set to make sure that you attain that goal Okay, and that's the reason why this slide, although it's not related to sentence correction at all, is very, very important. So I want you to absorb this, maybe even take a printout of this or, or a version of this and, 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 and stick it in your study area so that every time you are underwhelmed, every time you feel disappointed, you get reminded of why is it a worthy goal? Why is, it, why is that 730 plus a worthy goal for you? Okay, does that make sense? Okay, I have a question here. Isn't the standard deviation of GMAT 30 points? I mean, applying with a 720 should be same as applying with a score of 740. You're right, but I, I could say the same thing then. You know, if, if you have a 740, then, then the standard deviation of 30 points could also lead to that 770 part, right? So again, it all, um, the median scores are at 730. So if you get lower than 720, so 730, then you are below the median score. So you have to look at stats the way the adcom is going to be looking at this uh, stats, right? The other thing is the median. Why are the median scores going so high? Because again, because that because these um, these um, um, B schools they are they are being very selective. It's not that more number of people are now scoring 730 plus. No, that stat is still six percent. Only six percent of test takers are able to get to that 730 plus. Okay. Even though um, num more and more number of people target that, right? But that doesn't mean that you they, they will be able to get to it. They, they can get to that target score only if they prepare in the right manner, only if they have the right kind of motivation, okay? All right, where's the reading material you mentioned? Okay, uh, so this is part of your free trial. So if you log into egmat.com, um, you, uh, you will get to the free trial if you're not as yet a student. So you can look at that under the sentence correction section. Okay, all right. Okay, so that motivation part uh, said and done. Um, I would, okay, I have a request for a poll here. Poll the experience, zero, less than five years, more than five years for this audience. I will definitely do that. Uh, while you guys are taking a question, I'm going to get that poll ready. Okay, so good. Okay, now given that your target score should be 730 plus, what should be a target sentence correction ability? Okay, the answer to that question is your target sentence correction ability should be 90 percentile. Okay, that is what you should aim towards. Okay, now what does that mean in terms of the skills that, that you need to have? Now, for that, what we're going to do is we're going to solve some questions, and I'm going to um, ask you to solve these questions using the method that you typically use, and then we are going to critique, uh, we're going to understand. 
there's going to be a lot of lot of critique here we're going to understand how you so, how you solve the questions in a step by step manner and then where is it that you faltered if you faltered if you didn't falter then you definitely take that feedback with you. you you take that motivation with you that yes i'm doing things the right way if you did falter which i know some of you will and that's why you are here in this session to learn as to what you're doing wrong then you will understand wh how, what is it that you need to do to not falter Okay, so here is the first question. I'm going to give you about uh, two minutes to solve, the, not two minutes, one and a half minutes to solve this question. And um, you solve this question using the method that you typically use. Okay, and before I show you the question, uh, click on still solving here. That way I get to know how many people are engaged with this uh, question. And after one and a half minutes, and I'm going to turn my timer on, um, I'm going to give you, um, I'm going to obviously give you the, tell you that it's, that your time is done. All right. And one more um, housekeeping thing that I didn't tell you about. The Q&A pod that you see on the bottom, and I know most of you have already figured that out, that is for any questions that you have, um, which um, uh, for Shraddha and or Sandeep, um, I can also take up a few questions, for example, the question with regards to the, uh, to the uh, standard deviation question. I saw that question in the Q&A pod and I took it. So if that question follows um, the flow of my session, I will definitely take those up. But if not, Sandeep and Shraddha would respond to those questions. But all the questions that I ask from you, put the, put the answers of those questions in the polls that I show you on the right hand side of the screen. Okay. All right. So here we go. All right, last few seconds. It's already 90 seconds. Let's get some more people to put in their responses. All right, I am going to end the poll now. Okay, how many of you are confident about your responses, about your response, about the answer choice that you selected? How many of you are confident? Okay, about half of the class is confident, the other half is not. All right. Okay, so um, what is the thought process or what is the method that you use to solve the question? And I'm not going to give you the correct answer just yet. Tell me, walk me through the method that you use to solve the question. Again, I see that a couple of you are posting your answers in the Q&A pod. 
please for this question the questions that i'm asking you please put your answers in the um in the short answer poll here so i'm looking at it parallel since it is comparing we would add by uh, con construct and parallelism usage of verb uh, try to find parallelism makes sense okay fill in the answer choice fill in the answer choice as a blank and then see which one makes sense okay question split verb tense parallel parallel elimination then fit okay all right so here is um, one possible thought process and tell me how many of you followed this thought process i can see some of you have already mentioned that that you went by the by part and then you saw um, and, and then you looked at some other aspect so you so you would typically scan the answer choices to find similarities and patterns um, you noticed here that c d and e utilize by and a and b don't have any by so then you decide okay which which of these is correct do i need to have by or do i not or 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 do i don't need by um now you're saying you you'd see that the sentence is saying that less by government regulation so the by is required here for from parallelism perspective so you'll reject ab how many of you did it uh, are with me till now how many of you did it this way till now okay all right quite a few of you now you have to decide which ones of the c d and e are is is correct okay so let me just get my pointer here yeah so which ones of c d and e is correct so now you are going to look at c and how many of you rejected c because it looked weird by the coming to an end of uh, an era of uh, of a period of rapid growth how many have rejected it because it was weird quite a few of you right um, almost everyone rejected it because it was weird so you rejected c okay and then now you have to decide which ones of which one of d and e is correct um, you then saw okay e looks better because the end of is parallel to the government regulations both are nouns so then you selected choice d as the choice uh, e as the correct answer so how many of you followed this entire thought process as the means to get to the answer so i had about uh, what 48 was 48 um, selections for choice e 48 of you selected choice e and i'm hoping that if all of you are responding right now 40 of you uh, followed this thought process okay now what i'm going to tell you is that this is actually wrong choice e is not the correct answer the correct answer instead is this weird looking choice c okay how many of you are shocked to hear that something that we so conveniently rejected is indeed the correct answer okay all of you are shocked and it's it's logical okay now the takeaway this is an official question okay this is a difficult question it's from advanced official guide and it's categorized as a grammar based question so we are not even talking about meaning based questions just yet okay this is categorized as grammar based question okay and the key thing is you cannot solve difficult questions this is a 700 level question by simply using splits or pattern recognition method the method that seemed very i won't say logical but you're doing it in a step by step manner you are identifying the um, the similarities and then you're reasoning it out and you're selecting what the you're doing elimination based uh, based uh, uh, approach here a method that seems structured enough is not is not the right method for you to solve difficult questions correctly okay that is one thing that i want you guys to understand right now okay and definitely to achieve that 90th percentile you need to be able to consistently answer difficult questions correctly you have to train yourself to answer difficult questions correctly okay now one thing is going to happen you will make mistakes on difficult questions that goes without saying okay but if you follow the process the right way if you build your process skill level the right way you will be able to answer easy and medium questions accurately which you definitely need to and then when you get to hard questions you will be able to solve at least 60% of the hard questions correctly in order to get to that 90th percentile okay that is the cut off that you need for hard questions you need to be able to solve at least 60% again at least is the is is the um 
is the word that I want you to focus on. At least 60% of difficult questions correctly. Okay, which means that is a which means that that's almost a consistent uh, pace of answering questions correctly. Which means you need to have a solid process. Okay, and the process that works over here for difficult questions is the EG Maths meaning based method. And I want you to understand this is the EG Maths meaning based method. Why do I say that? Because when people say that they are using meaning based approach, many of them. And I might be wrong here, but from, from looking at the um, solutions that, that, that students provide, many of them first solve the question using grammar and then they utilize meaning as an, as an additional error to figure out, is there a meaning shift? Okay, so they, they, don't, they don't utilize meaning right up front in their approach. They utilize meaning as one of the error types to figure out if there is a meaning shift. And that is not the meaning-based approach that, that you need to use. The, the right meaning-based approach, the EG Maths meaning-based approach, is the one that, you, that, that starts off with meaning and that ends with meaning. And I'm going to talk to, and I'm going to demonstrate that to you. Okay? So the step one of this method requires you to read the sentence slowly. No fast reading, no skimming through the sentence, no just uh, you know removing uh, items from the sentence to understand the meaning. No, you have to read the sentence slowly by strategically pausing, by pausing at right points. I'm not saying that you pause after every word, but you pause after every logical set of words and, and we train you on, on where to pause and where not to pause. And then you, the goal of that is to understand the meaning of the sentence completely. Not 90% comprehension, 100% comprehension. You need to know what all what, what is the author trying to tell you. Your goal when you're reading a sentence is not to solve the question, is not to select the correct, uh, correct answer. Your goal when you're reading a sentence in step one is to understand everything that the author has written in the sentence. If that's... If, if that slight switch that you do in your, in your mind when you're reading the sentence, you're going to see tremendous improvement in how you approach that sentence. Okay, so I want you to make a note of that. When you're reading the sentence, your goal is to understand that what the author wants you to tell you, wants to tell you. Okay, so now let's, uh, let's apply that here. Overall slackening of growth in productivity. So here I've read a bunch of words, right? So I want to just understand what does that mean? Overall slackening of growth in productivity. Um, slackening, again, if you know the word, meaning of the word, there's that overall reduction in the growth in productivity. So essentially, the growth in productivity of something has actually gone down. It's been growing less. Okay, So that's what we are talking about. We are talking about the, um, the, the decreased growth in productivity is influenced so now the author is talking about okay is is influenced is is impacted less by now when you see less by you know that okay now now look i'm pausing at the smaller here i paused after a big chunk okay after that i paused after a very small after just two words right so but as i'm pausing i'm assimilating all that i'm reading okay then less by I'm again understanding what is the implication of the use of word less by, uh, uh, words less by. Essentially, the author is giving a comparison of what a uh, comparison of possibly two things. Um, these two factors uh, have influenced the reduction in the growth and productivity. Okay, less by government uh, <coughs> government regulation, less by government regulation, although. So the first factor is government regulation, and this is the less influential factor here, although that is significant for specific industries like mining. So that is referring to the government regulation, although that is significant for specific industries like mining. So the author is presenting a contrast here also that, yes, you know, it is influenced less by government regulation, but I understand um, government regulation is pretty significant for these certain industries. Then, now here comes the second one, second one, second factor here. Then the coming to an end, and as you read this, you know, you, you notice that, okay, by should have been here, logically speaking, right? Less by government regulation than by the second factor here, okay? Than by the coming to an end of a period. 
uh, coming to an end of, of a period is a little bit, uh, you know, I'm reading this, I want to make sure that I understand what does that mean. Coming to, to an end of a period, so the fact that there is this period of rapid growth in agricultural productivity, that comes to an end. Okay, so 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 the 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 manner the the fact that um, the, um, okay so this is basically done by coming to an end of a period. So essentially that end th that the period ends that is the um, that is a big influential. Okay, so essentially that is what the sentence is saying. That um, aspect number one, the the sentence explains the factors behind the reduction in growth and productivity. It happens by two things. And the second thing is the fact that this period of rapid growth in agricultural productivity comes to an end. The fact that this actually comes to an end. Okay. Now, and then the author presents the comparison that number two has more impact than number one. Okay. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. What aspects of the meaning of this sentence were you not able to understand when you solve the question on your own, and I'm going to give you a poll for that. And if you notice, I have four aspects here. Aspect 2, 1 is this one, and aspect 2, 2 is this one. So tell me, which ones were you not able to understand when you read the sentence on your own? And most likely, the correct answer, the majority of you will be selecting this one that you weren't able to understand, aspect 2, 2. And that is the reason why you select. That is because you didn't understand that, this wasn't even on your radar. And that's why when you rejected choice C and accepted choice E, you, you because this wasn't even on your radar, this wasn't really something that you had to consider. And that's why you got the question wrong. And you can see that the results are evident here. Comparison was very well stated. Less by, you know, it's obvious that there is comparison. Explains the factors behind reduction in growth and productivity. Again, you understood this. But this is the factor. This is the aspect of the meaning that you didn't understand. And that is what costed you this question. Now, what are your thoughts about this? Because this is... A very, if you understand this part here, I would say uh, the crux of the session is done for you because that's the main thing. I mean, this is the main thing and this is what I'm going to be reinforcing with the, other, with the three other examples that I'm going to be talking about um, in this session. But I want you to assimilate this and, you know, this is the, this should be that aha moment that, um, yes, it is kind of... Um, Disappointing for some of you that you didn't answer this question correctly, but that's why you are here, right? What is it that you should do? The thing that you need to do is you need to read the sentence correctly, properly, by reading it slowly to understand each and every aspect of the sentence. And because you may not understand certain aspects, you may end up selecting wrong answers because that aspect would not be on your radar, okay? How to read with understanding meaning question fast. Okay, we are not about fast reading here. Okay, but one thing that I will tell you is that as you, um, as you practice this method, as you go through the course and you solve all the application files, and I will be elaborating on that when I get to the course structure part of this session, um, what you will notice is as you, are, as you start doing this in untimed manner, and you start utilizing the process, okay, you will be able to um, do this in, in, within the time constraints that the GMAT test puts on you, okay. If this method were not possible to be applied in the test environment, then I wouldn't be sitting here telling you to use this method, okay. The very fact that our students are successful, that we have the maximum number of uh, success stories and reviews, on GMAT Club is indicative of the fact that these strategies work, okay? Isn't the answer too wordy? That's an official answer, right? It is, but it is it is a little bit verbose, but that is what the author wanted to communicate. Sometimes what the author wants to communicate requires those many words, okay? You said that not having by would be grammatical incorrect, but by parallelism, parallel sentences, 
start after buy, correct? Okay, I'm not sure what you mean by that. You need to have buy because less buy than buy. You need to have buy there. Yes, for maintaining parallelism, we need to use buy. Also thought sentence correction also reduced number of words. What made sense? No, again, it again, what makes sense? The, and, I, and I'll get to the answer choices there, okay? Yes, let me get to the answer choices. So again, over here, the correct answer, uh, the, uh, the, uh, in the, the mistake from grammatical standpoint is the missing by. But if you look at it, by the end of, now by the end of a period of rapid growth, this communicates a whole different meaning. What it says is that aspect number two is that um, it, it's impacted by the end. The, it's not that the very fact that the period of rapid growth comes to an end. No, not that. But choice E is saying that it's impacted by the end phase of that growth, which is absolutely different from what the author intends to communicate. Okay. So the reduction happens by the final part of the said period. Okay. Now, if you notice something very clearly, choice C and E, grammatically, both choices are correct. Okay. So choice E is a grammatically correct choice, but meaning is incorrect. And when I say meaning is incorrect, meaning is not log is not illogical by itself. By itself, choice E, the complete sentence with choice E is very well a, a correct choice. Okay, but but it doesn't communicate what the author wanted to communicate. And that's why reading choice A, reading the original sentence to understand the author's intent is so very critical. And again, I want to remind you, official question, okay, from advanced topics, okay, from, from advanced uh, official guide, categorized as grammar-based question. This, we are not even still talking about the um, uh, communication-based questions, okay. Okay, the answer was correct, but only doubt was whether period has already ended or is still ending. It doesn't matter. What it's saying is than by coming to an end. So essentially, it's the fact that this period comes to an end. Okay, that's what he's talking about. He's talking about a general principle here. Okay. So the reason we know it's coming to an end is because that is what choice A said originally. Absolutely, yes. Choice A is your, is your uh, I would say, holy grail for that particular question. You have to read that choice to understand what is it that the author wants to communicate. And again, one thing that I want everyone to understand is, what is the whole point of sentence correction questions? By And, and again, GMAT is a very, very logically put together test. Each and every section has a particular intent behind it. And it's all a very logical intent. With sentence correction, all the author, all GMAT is testing you on is, can you understand the intent that needs to be communicated, and can you present it in the correct form, so that if so that there is no doubts about what you are presenting, so that there is no incorrect, so, so that you, you you they can test whether you know the right constructs of English language, okay? And if you keep that in your mind, you'll understand that okay, choice A is what original sentence is what the author wants to communicate. So you have to do your level best to understand everything that the author wants to say, okay? And that is why that step is so very critical. And if you do that step well, there is no reason why you won't be able to do, um, th there's no reason why you won't be able to do uh, your, um, there's no reason why you won't be able to solve SC questions correctly, okay? All right. Do we go by meaning we get from the original sentence in every SC question? Absolutely yes. Absolutely yes. So take away, always begin with understanding the meaning. Okay. And complete. And again, I want to emphasize on this word as well. Because when people say they use meaning-based method, they don't focus on getting complete understanding. In the previous example, there was one teeny aspect that, that you guys missed. And that is why you, you couldn't answer the question correctly. So you have to focus on complete understanding of the meaning. Okay. All right. So here are some observations which we have already talked about. If you do splits plus grammar, you reject two choices. 
the remaining two incorrect answer choices, uh, they are grammatically correct, but there is a meaning change. So again, 100% meaning understanding is required. Okay, so from total, from just pure grammar perspective, you could only reject two choices. For the other choices, you there was a, a meaning change there, but they were grammatically correct. Okay. All right. So now let's solve a second question. Now I want you to use the EGMAT meaning based method, which means I'm not going to put any timing constraint on you. Take your time and uh, solve this question, and uh, we will. Let me open the poll for that. Now, before we go into that, let me also get the request, uh, a poll that was requested by one of you. How many years of experience do you have? I mean, granted, this is not going to be a representative of, uh, of everyone applying, but it just, um, it, it obviously gives you a good representation of people who are there in this session with you. Okay, so more than five years of experience, about larger segment here, 40, uh, 43%, 44%. Okay, quite a few with zero years of experience. Wow, you must, uh, I'm, I'm guessing that you would be applying for, um, for MIM type programs, they're not MBA. Is that right? For those of you who have zero years of experience, are you applying for MIM type, type programs? Okay, I would say zero to one. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Okay. And now let's get to question number two. Let's get you all to click on still solving. Okay. So I'm going to give a 30 second warning after 50% of the class selects an answer choice. Okay.
Okay, last 15 seconds. All right, I'm going to end the poll now. Almost everyone has selected the answer, uh, some answer choice. So choice B appears to be the most popular choice. 44% of you have selected that, then choice C, and then choice E. Okay. All right, so the correct answer choice is choice B. So I won't keep that as a, as a, as a surprise. Um, now, Clearly, this is a completely underlined sentence. So when I ask you, okay, what similarities or dissimilarities were you able to find in the choices, the answer would be no, not many, right? Is this that correct? You, you wouldn't have been able to find a whole lot of similarities and, and dissimilarities in the answer choice. And again, it would, it, it would have been very difficult for you to figure out, figure that out, okay? So really, you know, this is, this is an EGMAT question. It is difficult for in, in a sentence that's completely underlined to find similarities and dissimilarities, right? So again, applying that splits method becomes really difficult here. So again, EG math meaning based method is what we need to use. So that's what we're going to that's what we're going to do here now. Because diegetic music, now this means that um, because the author has used the word because there is a cause and effect here, there should be a cause and effect. Okay, that's something which you require the author to tell you. Because diegetic music, I'm going to shorten this as DM, actively referenced in the film rather than confined to the background. So you pause here, okay. Why am I pausing here? Because I've read quite a bit of information. It seems that it's a natural break. It's between two commas, so, it's a, so that's a natural break. So diegetic music is actively used in the film rather than simply being confined rather than simply being there in the background. So it's providing description of diegetic music, description in the sense, how is it used? Okay, so the how part of it, how is it used? Okay, invoking a sense of verisimilitude. Invoking a sense of verisimilitude, what, what does verisimilitude mean? I don't know, okay, but invoking a sense of verisimilitude, what does that talk about? Who invokes or what invokes the sense of verisimilitude? Clearly, the diegetic music. Okay, diegetic music invokes a sense of verisimilitude. It's essentially providing this part is again describing diegetic music. It's telling what it does. Okay, it tell, it, it's telling what it does. Okay, the idea that art can express a truthful version of reality. Now, this part explains what verisimilitude is. So, I don't really have to rack my brains uh, if I don't know the meaning of verisimilitude. The author has presented that context. The idea that art can express, art can express, what is art over here? Art is essentially this, um, digit, this kind of music can express a truthful version of reality. Now, why would you need a truth, so truthful version of reality? So essentially, to depict reality, um, art can be used. And that's the, very sim, that's the definition of verisimilitude, okay? Filmmakers creating period dra dramas. Now, when you come to this part over here, you feel as if there is a jump here. So far, you were talking about diegetic music. How how is it used? What what emotion does it lead to? Now suddenly, the author is talking about the author has shifted gears and he's talking about filmmakers. Now there is a jump here, so I want you to recognize this. Whenever you and I'm going to, so I'm just going to write this part over here. A jump, okay? Filmmakers creating period dramas use it often. So even though there's a jump, even though you feel there's something not quite right with it, you should still read the entire, read that entire chunk and understand what does it mean. Filmmakers who create period dramas, what are period dramas? You know, these are things that happened way back in the history, in the past. Use it often. Use what often? Use diegetic music often. Okay. So 
it is kind of linked to the context of the sentence it's not completely um, disconnected from the sentence after all the author is talking about diegetic music and he's saying that it is it it invokes that sense of verisimilitude what is verisimilitude that art can express a truthful version of reality you know so yes for 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 filmmakers who are using period drama who are creating period dramas things that happened way back in the past will definitely it, it makes sense for them to use diegetic music often okay so here is the sentence structure here as we are again as what this what this demonstrates is how we are reading where we are pausing when we are reading the sentence okay in terms of the aspects of the meaning feature of dm presented how how it is used then dm invokes a sense of verisimilitude what does it do and then filmmakers who create period dramas use it often so these are the three aspects that we were able to get from the sentence but and there is a big but here the sentence began with because so i'm going to ask you based on the three aspects that you saw here aspect 1 aspect 2 aspect 3 do you see a direct cause and effect here no has the author correctly mentioned a direct cause and effect no the answer is no to us when we take a look at these aspects and these are the only aspects that we can extract from the sentence as is we don't see any cause and effect okay which means that there is definitely something wrong with the sentence so first of all because has no bearing right now okay we don't know what is the cause and effect secondly we experience this jump when we were reading the sentence both of these observations combined tell you that there is definitely something wrong with the structure of the sentence okay and this part is very important for you to understand and again let, let me first walk you through what the error is again because presents a causality and we don't have a causa the author failed to to express that causality so we should infer that causal relationship now how will we infer that before we even take a look at the answer choices we should have a strong idea of what is it that the author wants to communicate that's very very important okay so before we even go into the answer choices we need to infer we have to infer the causal relationship okay so aspect 1 feature of and 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 what makes sense as a causal relationship definitely dm because dm invokes a sense of verisimilitude filmmakers who create historical dramas use dm often that is the logical cause cause and effect okay and again you go through the three aspects so again what you i want you to understand step by step what is it that we are doing we are extracting all the information from the sentence as is even though we are experiencing certain jumps in the sentence we are still not giving up we are extracting the information okay that's one thing then we are figuring out is the author telling everything that he should have the answer is no and we we get that in uh, we get that because because has not been represented properly and we experience that jump while reading the sentence so because plus the jump okay and then we come to so this was step 1 2 and now we are inferring the 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 causal relationship and because you understand these aspects so clearly for you to infer the causal relationship should come very naturally so again nothing that i'm doing over here is anything uh, out of the world or, or out of the ordinary the thing is today you don't focus on it you don't think that this thing is required is that correct everything that i'm doing here is common sense but the reason why you don't do this today is because you don't think that it's needed is that correct and my job here is to tell you that it is absolutely needed and that is why just the understanding that this level of analysis is required will have a major impact a huge impact in your sc accuracy and sc ability okay and definitely the question that uh, is could be there in mult in, in a number of you um, in in your minds right now is how am i able to do this in 90 seconds i have a question sitting in the q and a pod i started studying the master comprehension and i want to understand how to slowly read the meaning and then also read the options in only 90 seconds so that's not going to happen in master comprehension course you're going to start to see the reduction in time as you get to i would say parallelism module or maybe a comparisons module 
okay but by the time you reach the end of the course you will start to see reduction in time and that's why when you're doing the course whether it's master comprehension whether it's sentence correction you should throw away your watch use your clock or watch only to guide you um, as to your study session there not during not to time yourself in the questions and that's the reason why all of our quizzes in the course are not timed okay they are just untimed quizzes because we don't want you to time yourself all the timing stuff comes into scholarinium when you are cementing your your methods and i'll talk about that in detail okay so the whole part of the, the takeaway in this question which is different which is in addition to the takeaway that we had in the previous question is that even if you when you don't have that 100% clarity in the meaning after reading the sentence spend those few seconds additional few seconds to infer the information from the sentence before you look at the answer choices don't ever look at the answer choices to find clues and this will be contrary to majority of what you think is that correct so my question is don't ever look at the answer choices for clues this is contrary to what you think and majority of you are saying yes but this is the way it goes and i'm going to explain to you why that is the case and that is the difference between choices b and c for those of you who selected choice c actually fell in that trap okay so causality we have inferred right in terms of the error analysis the reason why you experienced that jump was because there is no verb for uh, diegetic music that's why you experience that jump now what could be the verb that's 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 something that you have to figure out definitely we've already inferred the causality here now to to express this causality invoking should be invokes that's that's clear and that's going to take care of your grammar based error as well so that is the beauty of your meaning based approach if you are doing that analysis up front when you get to the the error analysis and the answer choices your time gets slashed significantly okay that is the beauty of doing that thorough analysis up front and the very nature of sentence correction questions the official sentence correction questions let you do that okay that is the whole reason why this method works because the questions are designed in that manner okay now let's take a look at choice b now when you after doing all of this analysis when you take a look at the individual answer choices you shouldn't be you should consider chunks of those answer choices for example over here especially when the sentence is completely underlined don't think that this entire chunk is now a brand new set of words that you have to focus on intently no consider this as you know a segment of uh, let's say five segments put together and now you have to see how these segments have been rearranged because that is that is what a completely underlined sentence um, gives liberty to the test uh, maker to do okay they can rearrange any of these chunks uh, these chunks in any way they want so that's what we have to do to understand whether the rearrangement done is correct or not actively reference in the film rather than confined to the background okay so this is uh, so this is um, the description of diegetic music and it's placed correctly because it's modifying diegetic music here right after it is often used by filmmakers creating period dramas now the last part over here has been flipped in this choice and that's absolutely fine it still communicates the same meaning again telling you that the same meaning can be communicated by two different sentence structures okay because it invokes a sense of verisimilitude yes that's the meaning that we wanted to communicate this causality that we inferred here so this causality has been expressed here a sense of verisimilitude the idea that art can express a truthful version of reality this entire chunk has been placed right next to verisimilitude perfect all the aspects that that the author wanted to communicate that we helped author articulate have been communicated over here okay so choice b is wrong now tell me for those of you and majority of you did not select choice choice b so tell me why did you reject choice b why did you reject choice b another very important thing if you are selecting a particular answer choice you should be confidently rejecting each of the other four incorrect answer choices okay now it was in passive voice okay and that is why you're saying because of passive voice you rejected this choice why is passive voice wrong 
Diegetic music is often used by filmmakers. Why is it wrong? Passive voice is wrong in two cases. Actually, yeah, you can say, say it in two cases. If the original sentence only talks about, if the original sentence talks about the doer and the object. Okay. But this is what the original sentence says. But the answer choice, let's say the incorrect answer choice, doesn't talk about the object. In that case, you know, this would be wrong. Okay. Um, again, um, there could be multiple things. Essentially, over here, the main thing is that in the original choice, filmmakers creating period dramas use it often. So you have filmmakers use diegetic music often. You have the doer over there. And that is what choice B is also communicating. Diegetic music is often used by filmmakers, right? So if the doer has been mentioned in the original choice correctly, right? And uh, uh, with a particular intent and your answer choice also expresses the doer, then there's nothing wrong in the passive voice. Okay. Now, if the doer were not mentioned in the original choice and the un incorrect answer choice institutes that doer, then yes, you can, you can say that the answer choice is incorrect. Okay. But in this case, all the meaning aspects that you inferred over here that you understood have been communicated correctly by choice B. And that's the reason why this choice is correct. Okay. Then I have another one. It started with because. Doesn't mean that because in any sentence that starts with because is wrong. Oh, well, this is choice B. Okay, choice A starts with because, but that's not the reason to reject a uh, choice. Okay. Um, I was confused about creating modifiers. Creating modifiers, period. Uh, wait. I was confused about creating that it modifies filmmakers. Yes, it does modify filmmakers because it is placed right after filmmakers without any comma. And again, this is why if you go through the rules of verb ing modifiers concept file, you will understand um, why, uh, how, how these modifiers work. Okay, so definitely go through that and verb ing modifiers file as well. Okay, all right. We will definitely talk about E. Okay. Okay. So now let's move on to Okay, now one thing that I do want you to understand is, let me get rid of this part here, too, many, too much of uh, annotate, too many annotations, okay. Um, again, I, uh, so I have a question in the Q&A board, if the doer is not mentioned in the original sentence, the answer cannot be in passive voice, please don't consider that as a rule, no, no, not at all. Um, again, I was just... As long as the meaning, whatever meaning you get from the original choice, that needs to be communicated by the correct choice, regardless of whether it's an active voice or passive voice. Okay, I can come up with numerous scenarios um, and, and show you when, when they are correct or incorrect. But again, you don't have to memorize that at all. Please, no, no, no. Okay, so so just uh, scratch that that, uh, that discussion completely. The, the whole point is that the incorrect answer choice should not add any meaning and should not take away any meaning. That is what you need to keep in mind. Okay. So thank you for asking that question. So, so that, that that gave me an opportunity to, to just set the record straight here, straight there. Okay. All right. So um, the key thing over here that I want you to understand and keep in mind is that apart from the grammatical errors that we have, after you understand all the aspects that the author wants to communicate and you infer whatever is needed, you need to keep this as a checklist for yourself, okay? And you need, and you need to make sure that the answer choice that you are rejecting or you are selecting takes. Um, you do. You run through this checklist for those answer choices, okay? And that is what we did here. Aspect one, aspect two, aspect three, causality. Okay. Yes, everything is fine. Now let's take a look at choice C over here. Filmmakers creating period dramas often use diegetic music. Absolutely fine, okay? Which invokes a sense of verisimilitude. This is kind of fine. Okay, I'm saying kind of fine because I know that this had to be the reason. But now this has been made as a as an additional information. So this this is not actually fine. I know for sure it's not fine because this was the causality here. Okay, that it invokes a sense of verisimilitude and that's why filmmakers use it. Okay, the idea that art can express a truthful version of reality this part is uh, 
fine here. Because it is actively referenced in the film rather than confined to the background, this is again wrong. So incorrect causality. So now this choice expresses everything okay except for the causality. Aspect 1, 2 and 3 are absolutely fine. They were given as is. They were presented as is in the original choice. Okay. This is the part that had to be inferred and that is the part that is not correct here for choice B and that is what a number of you selected, about 32 of you in this session selected choice C, 26% of the class. So again, the key reason why you got this question wrong was because you didn't do that extra step that the meaning-based method requires you to do, which is if you don't understand everything from the sentence, you have to make sure that you infer the meaning because implies a causality. The author didn't express the causality, so you had to infer the causality. In the absence of that inference, you selected choice C as the correct answer or choice E as the correct answer. And let's go to choice E. Okay. Now, choice D is wrong again because the aspect 2 is also not expressed correctly. Okay which is that DM invokes a sense of verisimilitude. So let's let's look at choice E because this is what a number of you, uh, about 20 of you selected choice E. Choice A started with because, which means there is a causality. What about choice E? Where did the causality go? Is there any word in choice E that expresses causality? Yes or no? And that is why choice E is wrong. So again, choice E was also wrong because of the same thing, causality. Choice A did not express causality intently, right, uh, uh, clearly. And because you didn't spend the effort in inferring that causality, you ended up selecting choice E. Okay. Uh, so I have, I did not choose choice C because causality does not refer diegetic music here. Um, again, over there, yes, causality, I, I won't say refer is the right word. It doesn't express the correct causality. Okay, it's, it's giving the causality between aspect 1 and aspect 3 and that is incorrect. Okay. The filmmakers don't use diegetic music because of how diegetic music is used. Okay. Can it refer to art as well and hence ambiguous? No. Again, you have to understand, so which choice are you talking about? Can you please confirm if it was the subject modifier error in option C? Okay, let's look at that. Let me see, do I have a slide with all the answer choices? No. Okay, let me go back. Okay. Choice C, let's see what you're saying. Filmmakers creating period dramas, okay. Uh, I did not choose C because, okay, so which one? Can you please confirm if it was subject modifier error in option C? There's no subject modifier error. I don't even understand what that means. Uh, yeah, so essentially over here, grammatically, there is nothing wrong in choice C. Grammatically, it seems like a correct, correctly written sentence. Okay. Yeah, the reason why the reason why choice C is wrong is because it doesn't express the meaning. Okay, it's saying that filmmakers creating period dramas used diegetic music because it is actively referenced in the film. That is why choice C is wrong. Okay. All right. Any other questions about this question? Please put them in the Q and A pod so that Shraddha can answer those questions. Okay, because I don't think um, a majority of students have these doubts. Okay. So in the interest of time, we need to move on to the next question. Okay. All right. Let's move on to question number three now. All right. Okay. Now this is another official question. Go ahead, click on still solving. I'm 
I have one question in the Q&A board that I want to address before I show you question three. Uh, when the sentence starts with the subject, it is wrong most of the times. Is it true? Absolutely not. Okay. Um, it's I, you need to definitely go through the master comprehension course to understand the constructs of English language. There is nothing wrong with the sentence starting with the subject. And I won't even say that the sentence should start with the subject all the time. No, it all depends upon whether you, whether the author wants to start with a modifier or start with the subject. It doesn't matter whether it, it so there's no rule like that. Okay, so definitely not. Okay, um, all right. Okay, so I'm going to show you the question now. Here is the question. Go ahead. All right, last 15 seconds. All right, I'm going to end the poll now. Here are the results. Okay. Give me just one second here. I think there is something not quite. Okay. 
Okay, sorry. Okay, so let's look at the correct answer over here is choice E, um, which again, 36% of the class selected that the choice D was also very popular, then choice C was also popular. So let's look at what, how to, how you should have solved this question. Now, this is an official question, again, I believe from advanced uh, OG book. So let's go through this. All right. Many of them chiseled from solid rock centuries ago. So essentially, this uh, this part of the sentence is saying that something was is uh, is is chiseled from solid rock many 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 centuries ago. The mountainous regions of northern Ethiopia, mountainous regions of northern Ethiopia, are dotted with hundreds of monasteries. So this is where things are a little bit off. Why? Because you're saying that. I mean, if you were to just simply consider what the author is saying, it would mean it would imply that the author is saying that these mountainous regions are chiseled from solid rock centuries ago. I mean, the mountains cannot be. I mean, it's not right that mountains are chiseled from solid rock. What what is right is that these monasteries that the mountains are dotted with these are chiseled from solid rock. So there's a clear um, mistake in in the modifiers that the author has utilized over here. So again, I'm trying to figure all of that out over here. What I'm demonstrating to you is as you are reading, you are um, doing error analysis. You are questioning whether the author has written the sentence correctly or not. I'm doing all of that together. And that is how what you will be able to do once you master this meaning based process. Okay. What I did over here, as I'm reading, I'm questioning, I'm under, as, I, as I'm reading, first of all, I'm breaking, and then as, as I'm breaking and I'm assim assimilating the meaning, I'm also questioning whether the author is logical or not. Okay, and then I'm trying to also figure out what could be the logical meaning. This is the level that you will be able to get to if you solve um, the questions utilizing the meaning-based method right from the get-go, okay? So over here, I'm showing you the step-by-step -step thing that you uh, that we've been doing till now. Aspect one is mountainous regions of northern Ethiopia have been discussed. These regions were chiseled from solid rock. Again, this is what this, the author is saying as is. And these regions are marked with hundreds of monasteries. Now then next, you question, is aspect number two logical? You question that. Why are you not questioning aspects one and aspect three? Because again, these aspects appear to be logical. There's nothing, there's no reason for you to question them. But aspect number two doesn't seem to be logical and that's why you're questioning them, okay? The mountainous regions were chiseled from solid rock centuries ago. This is not logical. Then you figure out what is logical? What should be aspect two? Logically, it makes sense to say that monasteries were chiseled from solid rock, okay? So I'm really glad that, major that very few of you selected choice A, which means that majority of you rejected choice A. Now, was the reason you rejected choice A as, as I discussed over here, or was it some other reason? Good, good. All right. So again, always verify if the sentence makes logical sense or not, which means that you'll have to check each and every aspect of the sentence. Okay. And this is exactly what we did in the previous one also. In the diegetic music question, we, there was something missing. That's why we had to infer. In this question, it was not, nothing was missing, but it was illogical, right? So that's why we had to infer the logical meaning, okay? All right. Now let's take a look at um, the errors. Again, error is obvious here. It's a modifier-based error. And again, if you notice, meaning-based errors are very much grounded based around the grammar errors also, right? Over here, you didn't have to do any further error analysis because the error itself because of the placement of the modifier led to the meaning-based error, okay? Likewise, pronouns errors could be meaning-based errors as well very easily if the pronoun is ambiguous, which means that it doesn't express the uh, meaning clearly, right? Likewise, subject verb. Subject verb was missing in, in sentence number one, right? Um, in sentence number one, uh, no, in sentence number two, diegetic music, the verb was missing, right? Which means that uh, that lended to the lack of meaning that the that, that that original sentence communicated. So again, 
all these grammar errors mo most of those uh, lead to meaning based errors and that's why if you approach the sentence from the standpoint of understanding the meaning you will be able to um, take care of a number of grammatical errors when you get to step two which is identify errors over here okay all right so now let's take a look at choice b chiseled from solid rock centuries ago the mountainous regions again that part is wrong again choice b was also not selected with uh, by a number of you but the nine of you who selected choices a and b you have to be cautious of this um, this aspect over here okay so please take that as a feedback now let's take a look at choice c hundreds of monasteries many of them chiseled from solid rock centuries ago aspect 2 is absolutely fine here are dotting the mountainous regions of northern Ethiopia. Now, R dotting, you know, that is not correct. There's a verb tense error here. Why do I say there's a verb tense error? Because R dotting means that they are actually doing the action of dotting right now. Okay, and that is not what the author wanted to communicate. The author simply wanted to communicate that these monasteries are there on the, um, in, in these mountainous regions. Are dotted means that they are present there all, all, all along the mountainous regions. But when you say are dotting the mountainous regions, it just takes away from, from what the author wanted to communicate. Okay, It is incorrect verb tense. Um, intended tense was a fact to be presented, right? Really that these, these dot the mountainous regions. So that is why this choice is wrong. So quite a few of you, 20 of you selected this choice. So I hope that you understand why this choice is wrong. And again, if you think about it, this verb tense error also leads to the meaning based error. So again, when you read the sentence are dotting the mountainous regions, you should question yourself is, uh, you know, are these monasteries actually doing the action of dotting because that's what um, this verb tense are dotting implies. So again, to, to have been able to reject choice C, you needed two things. One is this analysis here, definitely. Second thing is your understanding of this verb tense are dotting. What does that verb tense imply? So you needed to have that conceptual understanding of, of what does uh, present, perf present continuous tense um, signify. And that is where the concept file verb tenses one comes into picture that explains to you what does a present continuous tense imply. Okay, so again, both conceptual and process-based understanding is required to, to, to solve questions. Okay, let's look at choice D. The mountainous regions of northern Ethiopia are dotted with hundreds of monasteries, many of them, many of which are chiseled from solid rock centuries ago. Now, some of you may be wondering about is which correct or is them correct, okay? The original choice used them, choice E uses them, and I'll show you choice E in the next slide. But that's not even something that you need to worry about, okay? Look at R chiseled. Does it make sense to say that an action that happened centuries ago, it, is it correct to express that using using R chiseled, using a present tense? No, it's not. And that is the reason why choice D is, is incorrect. Okay. All the aspects are fine, but the verb tense is incorrect. The intended, the intended tense is past tense to show something that happened centuries ago. And that is why choice D is incorrect. Okay. Which again, 31 of you selected. So between choices D and E, there was almost a tie here. Okay. Look at choice E. The mountainous regions of northern Ethiopia are dotted with hundreds of monasteries, many of them chiseled from solid rock centuries ago. Now, what have what what is this over here? Many of them chiseled. This acts as a noun plus noun modifier. Many of them is the noun part here, which is also a pronoun. Chiseled is the chiseled from solid rock centuries ago is the noun modifier part. Okay, so if you don't understand this this construct. Um, you should go through the noun plus noun modifier concept files which are there in the modifier files. Okay. One just asking why is R chiseled wrong? Because that's 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 present tense, but this action of chiseled happened way back in the past, right? So you have to use past tense. Okay. Okay. 
all right so i'm going to skip this one possible faulty th uh, thought process because none of you selected choice a and b which means that you were able to identify the meaning based error but most of you got this question wrong and again the accuracy of the only one third of the class slightly over one third of the class was able to select this choice correctly uh, answer this question correctly but most of you got this question wrong because you because of the verb tense issue are dotting are chiseled which again you have to understand what that verb tense implies and for that you need to have that conceptual clarity from meaning perspective again everything is meaning grammar is meaning okay and that's what you have to ingrain in your mind you have to logically question each and everything are dotting what does that mean if i'm saying i am teaching that's an action that i'm doing if uh, currently right now if 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 choice c is saying many of uh, these um, monasteries are dotting are they actually doing the action of dotting right now as i'm reading the sentence no the answer is no right so you have to contextualize everything from meaning based perspective and as soon as you start doing that you will see that sentence correction will become very in enjoyable experience you will end up learning so much from each and every answer choice okay all right um okay i do see that uh, some of you have questions with regards to this one shraddha will be responding to these questions um, in the q and a pod okay all right so again this one was from advanced question and this one was a communication based question okay so the first one that we saw from from the og advanced was grammar based question this one is communication based question but you can see that everything is is um, is meaning based okay all right so now let's come to one very important thing over here solutions and i want you to understand i want you to answer this question right now what source do you use for solutions for every question that you solve today what is the source that you use for questions for every question that you solve today OG GMAT club in general um experts on GMAT club official guide okay none hunches okay now does your source provide you the solution to this level of detail when i say this level of detail the the level that you saw today wherein we do meaning based we we extract the aspects we then see which aspects have not been communicated by the answer choices and then accordingly you select the correct you figure out why you faltered majority of you are saying no okay now answer this question again will you be able to learn the meaning based approach without the solutions that are as detailed as what we discussed in as 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 we saw for questions 1 2 and 3 and i'm going to remove the answers here tell me will you be able to learn the meaning based approach without in the absence of such solutions the answer clearly is no okay you need to have solutions that give you that's begin with meaning that end with meaning you need to have those solutions and each and every solution in the eg math platform whether these solutions are in application files by the way these application files are exist only in eg math course and i'm going to tell you what these application files do practice files scholarium questions and official guide questions okay you whatever be the um, destination of the question each and every question in the eg math platform has this level of detail of solution which which means that we give you step step 1 understand the meaning step 2 identify the error step 3 analyze the answer choices okay so you need to have this level of detailed solution solutions with this level of detail in order to learn the meaning based approach okay so let's solve uh, the next question this is the last question um, also an official question let's solve this question and then we'll go into how is it that you should be learning the meaning based approach okay so
So, oops. All right. You guys didn't see the answers. Okay. Um, click on still solving. All right. All right, I have quite a few responses here. Just three of you are still solving, two of you. Okay, I'm going to end the poll now. Okay. Mm. If I were to assume that majority of you will select the correct answer or the larger segment will select the correct answer, Choice B appears to be the correct one, but that is not the correct answer. And I know you it would come as a shock that choice D is the correct answer here. So let's go through this. And again, this is a difficult question. All of these questions are difficult questions. So even if you're not able to get these questions correct, it's okay. Because you guys are preparing for sentence correction right now, right? The key thing for you to understand is take away the learnings, the right learnings from here, okay? So that you don't make these mistakes again, so that you incorporate those learnings in your study methods, okay? So I don't want any of you to get disappointed with the um, accuracy that you are experiencing in this session, okay? A star will compress itself into a white dwarf. 
a neutron star or a black hole. So it will, so it's talking about what the a star will compress itself into these into one, two, or three after it passes through the red giant stage. After the star passes through the red giant stage, depending on its mass. Okay. Now. This is where the problem is. The author, essentially what it's saying is, depending on its mass, should talk about when, whether the star will compress itself into dwarf, neutron star, or black hole. But the problem with how the sentence has been constructed is that, depending on the mass, this is the correct one, but it could also refer to after it passes through a red giant stage. Okay. A star will compress itself into these three after it passes through the, through a red giant stage, depending on the mass. Essentially, after it passes, essentially this part appears to be or could also be together, and that is why this choice is wrong. Okay. Okay. So now choice A was not selected by many of you, so you should have been able to identify this as the error. But choice B also has the same error after passing through the red giant stage, depending on its mass, now depending on its mass, could either go here or it could go here. Essentially, if depending on the mass modifies after passing through a red giant stage, essentially, uh, will okay, so over here, depending on its mass could modify passing or it could modify will compress and that is why choice B is wrong and that was selected by quite a few of you as the correct answer. Okay, let's look at choice C. After passing through a red giant stage, a star's mass will determine if it compresses itself into, now it should refer to star, but here star doesn't even exist, it's star's mass and that is why this choice is wrong. Okay, now and, and secondly, the other thing is, after passing, the mass is not passing, right? And that is what the sentence is saying, after passing, star's mass, as if the mass is passing. No, mass is not passing, it's the star that is passing, and that is why choice C is wrong. Let's look at choice D. Mass determines whether a star, after passing through the red giant stage, will compress itself into white dwarf neutron star or a black hole. So, this choice is correct. Now, here... I know many of you would have rejected choice D because it doesn't tell whose mass are we talking about. And that is a logical doubt that you may have, okay? But it's an official question and you have to take it, you have to learn from this question. Whenever you feel that, okay, the, there is something not quite right about the correct choice that you said that you rejected, always learn from that. Why did you reject that choice, okay? And again, SC is all about selecting the most optimum choice. If you read the sentence by itself, you will understand that the author, it's logical to say that mass of the star determines whether the star will compress itself. You won't think about mass of the galaxy that that star belongs to or mass of the neighboring uh, stars that exist. And that's not logical. The thing that's logical is that mass of the star will determine that. Okay, and that's the reason why this choice is absolutely correct, choice D, okay. Uh, choice E, again, not many of you selected that, the mass of a star after passing, again, mass is being referred to by after passing and that's wrong, okay. That's why this choice is wrong. So, choice D, which very few people selected, is indeed the correct answer choice, okay. All right, so again, this one is also from the advanced book. Um, and um, when I say 100%, this means 100% underlined, okay? Um, splits were not possible, and choice A was grammatically correct, but illogical meaning, other choices, had only pronoun reference gram grammar error, and then again, you needed to make sure that you understand the meaning completely. So, um, we have this question too. I think I'm going to be skipping this question um, and I'll give you this question for um, to practice at your own convenience. Okay, But I want to make sure that I tell you how is it that you should be preparing for your test. Okay, If you've spent more than 25 hours preparing for SC, how many of you have spent more than 25 hours preparing for SC?
okay so this means that quite a few of you are just starting preparing okay do you feel that you are at 90th percentile and i know the answer to this question no yeah okay have you solved every question using the meaning based approach i know the answer to this question too okay so really to achieve that 90th percentile you have to have that 100% clarity in meaning and for that you have to master the strategic pausing technique and that's what i want to be talking about now how is it that you can master that okay for this you have to go through master comprehension course every eg math student who starts his course his or her course with stage 1 depending upon the starting percentiles uh, which is determined based on your starting percentiles um starts off the course with master comprehension course that is the basic foundation course required for all of verbal because that technique is required the strategic pausing technique is required to do sentence correction course the right way to to understand the meaning the right way okay so that is a very very important thing okay now when you are doing master comprehension course and sc course do not time yourself that is a very very important thing don't worry about timing at all okay learn and master 200 concepts that's what you would need to do in order to do sentence correction sentence correction is the one section that has maximum number of concepts okay followed by critical reasoning and reading comprehension barely has any concepts okay so there are lots of concepts in sc and that's why you need to have that razor sharp understanding of 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 what the concept implies um, right and there is no rote learning required at all you know people think that you have to memorize so many rules how do you apply what rule no if you are practicing the right way if you are learning the right way everything is application oriented okay everything is logical so as long as you are learning the concepts the logical way which is what we teach at e which is how we teach at eg mat you will have no problems applying these concepts okay now another thing that i want to ask you is these are 200 concepts about 200 concepts right i want you to think about the current preparation method that you're using in fact let me ask you this question what is the current preparation method that you're using EG Math, good. EG Math trial, okay. OG EG Math, okay. Manhattan Self Study EG Math Club, okay. Studying rules from Manhattan Prep. Now, as you are studying, tell me for those of you who are not using EG Math yet, tell me what is the evidence. And again, this question is only for students who are not using EG Math, okay? Because I know the answer for EG Math, right? For those of you who are not using EG Math, how will you? What evidence do you have today? that tells you that you have understood or mastered um let's say the concept on um for how noun plus noun modifiers work how will you ascertain that how will you make sure that you have that understanding that what what is the evidence that that's going to tell you that or let's say um um each Uh, words such as each are always singular or the exceptions with regards to uh, when each is not singular okay how many of you non eg math users have that clarity have that evidence that tells you that you have indeed mastered this concept or that you you need to master this concept Okay, I'm not getting very many responses here. A lot is assumed, absolutely, by solving questions. And again, what kind of questions you'll be solving? Full-length questions to figure that out. Isn't that wastage of your um, of those questions? Okay, you need to have questions that are purpose-built to give you this kind of feedback, and that is what you get in the EG Math course. Now, let me ask this question to the EG Math students. Okay. Tell me, the EG Math people who are using EG Math course, where will you get this feedback from? That you that each is always singular, whether you have mastered that or not. Which file is going to give you that? This file is in your subject verb uh, course. It's a subject verb module. 
the concept quiz absolutely the concept quiz in always singular subject verb always singular file that concept quiz is going to give you the feedback that yes you have mastered it or no you have not mastered it which means you need to go back to the concept file likewise which concept file is going to give you this feedback that you have mastered noun plus noun modifiers getting 100% all always absolutely i'm glad to see that the file this this feedback is going to be given by the modifiers the in, in the modifiers module the file that is called mod, noun plus noun modifiers okay nowhere in the landscape of gmat courses will you find this granular of feedback at concept level and you need to have that feedback what is the point of answering full length questions in your practice sessions in your mock tests if you haven't mastered these concepts no you will end up getting frustrated when you're solving those full length questions your goal should not be to learn concepts your goal should be to identify the gaps that exist in your concepts as well as an application okay but when you are learning there shouldn't you should learn in the manner such that these gaps don't even arise that is why people who go through the eg math course the right way and i'm adding that qualifier there people who go through the eg math course the right way don't need to solve that many questions in the cementing phase to to get to that 90th percentile why because they are solving the questions the right way from the get go they are learning everything the right way from the get go okay all right and again this is i'm i've just listed out these these concepts here for you and i want you to just absorb this slide just go through this and figure out does your course give you this granular of feedback today the answer is no okay and all the egma students are here egma students are here i'm sitting here and i can tell you with 100% confidence that the egma course will give you this kind of feedback okay now as i said you need feedback that tells you whether you've learned the concepts properly or not so that and provide you the corrective action okay so really to learn these concepts you need to learn then refine and then excel okay now when you do scholarium for example after you've done through uh, after you've gone through the course when you do scholarium scholarium gives you feedback that yes you are not you're answering you know modifier questions incorrectly or verb ing related questions incorrectly it gives you that level of feedback okay so typically when you're learning from a typical book or an online course you get only 8 to 10 feedback points that to only uh, in, in in some books okay but when you learn at egmat you get through these concept files you get 87 feedback points okay and you can utilize you utilize those feedback points to make sure that you reach the right proficiency level you focus on the right things right now the next thing is apart from once you learn and master the concepts you need to apply these concepts now how do you apply these today when do you learn the application select yes if you learn if if you do it after learning all the concepts select no if you do while learning the concepts when do you learn the concepts to the application today that is the right time to learn the application while you are learning the concepts but unfortunately the um, the methods again as as we talked about these are all the concepts that you need to learn in sentence correction right most preparation courses teach you application after teaching all the concepts okay but at egmat we have inserted this duo application and practice files in every module so your subject verb block as you're learning subject verb concepts will have purpose built application and practice files which will only have which will have full length st questions but only with subject verb related errors that you have learned about in this particular module when you come to verbs as you are learning the verbs concepts you will get questions that have only subject verb and verb based errors okay and that is the beauty of going through the eg math course because you learn the application as you are learning the concepts which means you don't have an overload of concepts as you are learning the concepts because when that happens when you when you are learning application at the end of the game what happens is that 
that you feel um, that oh my goodness which which concept should i apply and that kind of thing happens only because you haven't learned application while learning the concepts now i believe many of you what you do is you learn the concepts from the books and then you go on gmat club or an official guide and you filter in questions based on what if let's say you went through verbs chapter in your manhattan sc book then you will go to gmat club or official guide and you'll select questions that have verbs right most often than not more often than not questions from official sources and i'm going to talk about only official sources won't just have word based errors they will definitely have other errors belonging to these categories that you may not have learned till that point and so you will end up getting frustrated you will end up making mistakes on errors that you that you haven't even learned about right and that is the how many of you have experienced that that you see a question which has a certain concept that you haven't learned about right and that happens very frequently okay and in order to avoid that that's what we have done in our system we give you questions that only have the concepts that you have learned till that point now when you come to modifiers there are three application and practice file doers there which means that these files will have all the errors that you have learned till this point in addition to the modifier errors now when you go through this file you are learned so you are progressively building your your ability and you are building your ability skill set to answer questions to answer questions based on the application method okay because of all of this now these are the number of files that you see number of process teaching files now today when i went through these four questions i solved them in a step by step manner you see similar or even more detail of solutions in a step by step manner in these application and practice files okay and that is why again all of this has to be done in untimed manner and as you do this what you see is by the time you reach the end of the course your ability increases exponentially your ability curve goes like this okay initially you will have lower ability because you haven't as yet um absorbed the process as well you haven't as yet gone through all the concepts but by the time you reach modifiers parallelism it just has that exponential increase in your ability it, it leads to that okay and that's why by the time you finish the course the right way okay you get to 70th percentile at least 70th percentile ability and then after that you then utilize scholarium to cement your methods okay now in terms of the feedback um i had a question over here from where can you get the feedback points in the egmat course each and every uh, score that you get in the egmat files concept files practice files application files is the feedback point okay that's what uh, that's what you need to utilize if you're scoring 60% in a concept file that means you are lacking in certain concept that is taught in that particular concept file and no more than three concepts are taught in, in in every concept file now when i say three concept these are very granular concepts for example pronoun there are five or six different concepts pronoun file teaches you three of those then the pronoun article teaches you another another three of those okay so that is what you get through the um, through the feedback points okay now um, an eg math student gets feedback on application 23 times okay now i want to tell you how how to utilize that feedback now i'm going to share with you the dashboard of sahil um he scored a v, uh, v38 getting a 730 now this is this is what his dashboard look like okay now if you think about it he scored we want you to score 100% in all the files okay when he scored that 60% that told him that there is something not quite right with how he is going about um the understanding of subject verb makes sense okay that translated to his 60% score in application file but it was very clear that he took that feedback and he spent a lot of time he spent almost 10 minutes per question and there are five questions in this application file he spent 10 minutes per question reviewing why did he get the question wrong okay so he he took this feedback and he incorporated it there okay and based on the notes that he had in his system it was very clear that he was answering questions incorrectly because he wasn't able to understand apply the concept of subject verb makes sense 
Okay, and that is the beauty of getting the feedback here. Now, yes, you can say that you can argue, but his score did not increase. Again, he chose not to not to take the questions again, not to attempt the questions again. He he decided to simply go through the solution step by step in this file. He took proper notes and he he essentially got the essence of it. And that essence is indicative is it is demonstrated in his hundred percent score on this uh, subject work practice quiz. Remember, this is an application practice quiz duo. We teach you the concept in the application file, teach you the application um, of the process on application files, and then we have you practice it on your own in the subject work practice quizzes, and we give you detailed solutions there, right? So because he spent so much time on the application file, he was able to reap the benefits of that. He was able to see that now he's able to answer questions correctly in the practice file, okay? That is what I mean by the feedback, okay? Nowhere in the industry would you get this level of feedback, okay? Now, what you do with this feedback depends on you. It, uh, that's why I said, just having access to the course, just doing the material doesn't guarantee success. You have to do the material the right way, okay? Very often, when I see uh, students who write, who write to us saying that I didn't improve, I went through your course, I spent hours, I went through your course, but I didn't improve. The minute I log in into their dashboard and I see, what I end up seeing is their scores are about you know, uh, less than 60%. Okay? And, even, and after looking at the scores, I look at the amount of time that they've spent, 10 minutes on, 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 each, on each file, around 15 minutes, 10 minutes, 5 minutes. That tells me that the student is just going through the motions. Okay, and that is why I say you have to do the course the right way. You have to understand the intent behind the course. Okay, yesterday I spoke with a with a successful student. He got a 750 um, V42 Q49. Um, I looked at his dashboard. Beautiful dashboard, 100% all the way. Um, quite a bit of time spent on files. And I asked him, "Did you take the feedback?" He said, "Yeah." I wanted to make sure that I get 100% in all the files, and I can see that as a as um, as an uh, as a comment here, getting always 100%. Yes, and that itself makes sure if you have that goal that you have to get 100% in each file. We have done the job of making sure that we create a modular enough course for you. All we want you to do is implement that course the right way, and if you target that 100%. Keep that as a target to go through the SC course. There's no reason why you won't be able to do well in the exam. Okay. Do you get individual feedback session, for example, video call with GMAT experts? Um, again, on an as-needed basis. Frankly, the course is so good that you won't even require that individualized feedback. And that's what we have done. We have worked with upwards of 40,000 students to make sure that we perfect our um, AI system. Okay. We want to make sure that we enable... Um, everyone to get to to have the right kind of course in order to prepare for the GMAT, okay? And and that's why and we and we we do this at scale and we are able to do this at, at scale because we have a 10-person technology team that just works on implementing and making our AI system perfect day by day, okay? But at the same time, we also have a 10-person support team, right? So if you do face issues. We review your account in detail and we give you a detailed feedback on email. And again, the kind of feedback that you get on email is, is exceptional. Um, um, but if in cases you are still not able to get it, we may make an exception and we may do a call with you. But again, that is very, very rare. That's not even required. And that's the, that's the whole point of our system, our technology being so advanced that you don't require that. Okay. All right, so I have a thing here. It being offline, how do we take feedback from trainers? All our feedback is driven into these files. These files, each and every file that you see here, required, subject verb, a green number, required about 400 hours of expert time. So all that effort has already been put into the course. And, and we are enhancing this course on, on a day-to-day -day basis so that you continue to get the most up-to-date content from us. Okay, what about quant? Absolutely, we have similar files, a similar course structure for quant as well. You get similar kind of feedback for quant. In fact, attend my webinar tomorrow on number properties and you can see it for yourself. Okay, all right, let's continue. 
Now, verb tenses was a similar thing. If you look at it, verb sequencing, why did he need to spend 64 minutes on it? This file is just 10 minutes long, maximum 15 minutes long, right? But he spent more than an hour on this. Why? Because he wanted to make sure that he understands each and everything from the file, okay? Now, now when you look at verbs practice quiz, you'll notice that he only got 64% and you may come and question me, Okay, Pyle, your uh, Sahil didn't incorporate the feedback here, but that's not true. Over here, if, if you delve deeper into verbs practice quiz, you will see that the two questions that he got wrong, he bookmarked those questions, okay, and he reviewed those questions. He made notes for those questions, right? So, uh, so the time over there captures the attempt time of the of the quiz, but you. Uh, dig a bit deeper and you'll see that there was further analysis done by Sahil over here to make sure that he learns everything from these questions. So again, he took feedback seriously and in his own words, in the first two attempts, he lacked the knowledge of application of concepts. Concepts can narrow down options from five to two, but beyond that is the application of concept that plays a game changing role. And again, successful students leverage feedback to excel. And we've written an article, we reviewed about 400 students, 200 of uh, people who were successful, 200 who were not successful. And uh, majority, uh, and, and what we noticed was this common pattern. Students who were successful had model dashboards, upwards of 85% of accuracy in concepts and applications. They got similar number of feedback, but the feedback for corrective actions were way fewer than feedback, than the positive feedback points, because from the get-go, they had that aim of getting that 100% score. In the cases where they didn't score 100%, they went back and they reviewed the file, and that was indicated in the time that they spent on those files. Whereas when you take a look at um, a similar table for unsuccessful students, they had a, a, more more points over here, fewer points, fewer positive feedback points because they weren't doing the course the right way. Okay. Dr. Rohit Singh Malan, he scored a 760. There's absolutely no comparison. Prior to using the meaning-based approach, I was lost in two out of three out of five answer choices. And you saw that today. The four questions that we did, they're all difficult questions and the accuracy for those questions was way below 50% for each one of those. Why? Because you were stuck between choices. You selected choices that you thought were correct, but they ended up being incorrect because of the meaning issue. Okay. My brain would tell me, even this is right, this sounds right, there is no way to come to a conclusion without the meaning-based approach. With, with the meaning-based approach, my mind was at ease. I could see the core of the sentence, understand what the author wanted to say. I could see genesis of the sentence. I could see various appendages attached to the sentence. I was rejecting answer choices on solid grounds and my verbal score improved from V32 to V42. Okay. That's the, that's the, I won't, I, I'll use the word magic, but it's not really, a lot of hard work goes into doing that magic, right? So that's the magic of um, following the meaning-based approach and doing the course the right way. The meaning-based approach is a game changer, and this is Jim Yee, and, and definitely go through his uh, YouTube um, debriefing session here. Um, before this, I was just learning grammar, but I was unable to solve 700 level questions. When you get to that 700 level, grammar is not going to be the deciding factor, and we saw that today. These were all difficult OG questions. How many questions did we even debate? For how many questions did we even talk about a grammar rule? Did we even debate about the grammar rule? None of them. It was all meaning. Grammar is not going to be the deciding factor. The only way you would be able to select the correct answer in 90 seconds is by understanding the meaning. And again, timing will follow. Time is a consequence. The, time of, the amount of time that you take to solve a question is the consequence of the ability that you develop in the application of the method to solve the question. It's a very loaded sentence, but I, I'm going to repeat it. The amount of time that you take to solve a question in the exam environment is the consequence of how well you learn the application method, the right application method to solve that question type. Okay? So again, I'm going to leave you with this. Three reasons to score 730 plus. Top B schools now require a score of 730. More than half of the scholarships offered by any top university goes to students who score 730 plus. 
the ROI that you get over a 10 year period is upwards of half a million dollars if you do your MBA from one of the top B schools, which means that 730 score plus is a must. Okay. So again, these are just uh, some of the slides which you may take a look at um, at your own convenience. I'm going to leave you with this. Um, all right. I'm going to change the pane now. And I want you to, here's a presentation so you can download that. And I want you to write down what is the biggest learning from this webinar and your comments and feedback. Because I've been talking quite a bit and I'd like to hear from you now. Some reason my webcam decided not to work now. Good, I'm glad. I'm confident. I think I should appear for GMAT now. It was fun learning. Good. The meaning based approach, very nice. Okay, I have a question. How much time does it take to learn GMAT verbal through eGMAT on an average? Okay, this question is, uh, I won't say it's the right question to ask. Okay. Why? Because it all depends upon what your starting abilities are. Okay. For example, if you're already starting uh, with SC ability of, let's say, 75 percentile, then you'll take two to three days uh, spending, let's say, about um, two hours every day. So I would say fewer than 10 hours to get to that 90th percentile in SC. But if you are, if your starting ability is, let's say, um, less than 50 percentile, then in that case, you will take about at least 10 days um, to, to basically 10, when I say 10 days, uh, two hours on, on the weekdays and then about eight hours on the weekend, total total time spent uh, on the weekend uh, in order to, to get to that 90th percentile. Okay, so it all depends upon people. Yesterday, I, uh, the, the student whom I spoke to, he was able to improve verbal within, uh, he was able to prepare for the entire verbal uh, within within the month, within a month, there have been people whom, whom, whom I've spoken to who take about two months to prepare. And then there are people who, because they don't prepare the right way, they don't plan their preparation the right way, they end up taking months. So technically, ideally within a month, you should be able to finish your verbal prep if you are starting off at, let's say, 50th or 40th percentile. If higher than that, then you should be able to prepare that in less amount of time. Okay. So it all depends upon your starting ability, how regular you are, how devoted you are, how much you follow the right way of preparing. Okay. I hope that answers your question. All right. Any other questions? Uh, I'm going to remove all the questions from the Q&A board now uh, so that any questions that you may have, please put them over here. Would you cover more topical sessions moving ahead? Absolutely, we cover, we have one session each for, when you say topical se sections, did you, oh, I, I thought, did you, do you mean sections in SC or did you mean um, sections of verbal? If it is the latter, then yes, next weekend I'll be doing a similar session on reading comprehension. And then after that, uh, Rajat is going to be doing a session on critical reasoning. And then uh, tomorrow I'm doing number properties. And then a week later, I'll be doing algebra. Does Scholaranium contain questions from OG 2020? Absolutely, it does. Scholaranium, official Scholaranium contains uh, uh, questions from um, OG 2020. How's quant of EG Matt? Very good. If you learn the right way, if you focus on Building your ability from the get-go, quant of EGMAT is the right course for you. But if you are looking for shortcuts, then no, this is not the right course for you. Okay, I'll be very frank. We don't teach shortcuts. We believe in building your ability. And that is why we teach you the concepts, then we teach you the application, then we give you practice to, to practice that, right? And then that's how you get to the level that you need to get to. Okay, so if you are one of those people who wants to prepare for quant in a structured manner, you will be able to, you will definitely enjoy quant of EGMAT. Any prerequisites needed before you start EGMAT classes? No prerequisites required. 
regard you can if you purchase the course today even if you haven't taken a diagnostic test you will you will get prompted to take the sigma x mock test which is going to give you your subsectional abilities it's very important to know what your starting points are so you simply come and take the mock test get your starting points and create your personalized study plan and get going with the with the implementation of that personalized study plan is the diagnostic test free absolutely we offer we offer a total of five mock tests uh, one out of these five is available to everyone so it's part of your free trial so definitely take that Personalized GMAT planner, uh, Merin, I would request you to schedule a call. Um, uh, if, if you're not an EGMAT student yet, uh, you won't have access to the personalized GMAT planner, but you can definitely schedule a call with one of our GMAT strategy experts and, uh, and he or she can walk you through that. So Sandeep, if you can share the link to that planner, I would appreciate that. But for those of you who are EGMAT students, I want everyone um, every one of you to create your personalized study plan. It's very intuitive. You have all the tools that you require to, to create a study plan, so definitely do that. Can you please take sessions for SCR? Absolutely. We will be conducting a session, as I said, Rajat would be doing that um, in two weeks from now. How do I register for the classes? Simply go to egmat.com, uh, buy page, purchase the course, and get started. Okay. Should you take the mock test after you go through the concepts? Because I'm not at all confident with the concepts. Not at all, Divya. You, you, that's why you have the... Uh, Okay, that's why you have the um, this thing. What do I say? Um, the, the the concept quizzes, right? So after every in each concept file, you have a concept quiz which you um, which you basically uh, take to figure out whether you have improved in in that particular concept or not. Okay, so mock tests should be taken. For example, let's say you finish. I would say mock tests should be taken after you finish verbal and quant both. Okay, you don't really need to take a mock test um, after you finish, let's say, SC. After you finish SC, take SC ability quiz because in Scholaranium, because that's a mini mock of just SC. After you finish CR, take a CR ability quiz. That's a mini mock for CR, likewise for RC. And after you finish the entire verbal, take a verbal ability quiz. Okay, so do that, okay? And after you finish both quant and verbal, then take the Sigma X mock test. Will you do more SC grammar classes? No, this is the only sentence correction free webinar that we do. Uh, beyond that, feel free to look at the free trial videos and ultimately I would say join the course. Does master comprehension course contain basic grammar rules? Um, it's, a, it's, it's a one of a kind uh, course. You will not find this course anywhere. In not and I'm not just talking about in the GMAT test prep industry. In any test prep industry, you're not going to find this course because this doesn't exist. Uh, the con this is a cornerstone co course which basically teaches you how to read the sentence. So when you say whether it teaches basic grammar rules, it teaches basic grammar rules pertaining to the construction of the sentence, the subject, the verb, and object. So whatever you would need to understand. Um, the how to read the sentence to understand its meaning that's what this course contains beyond that the grammar rules that are tested on sentence correction in sentence correction section are taught in the sentence correction course okay do you cover AWA prep not really we don't have a course for AWA prep but that being said there is a reason why we don't have it because we invest time in the opportunities um, where students are facing problems, right? Wherever you face problem, we invest our time to, to basically um, get you to, to basically solve that problem. And our students, after going through the CR and the RC course, do not have any problems doing AWA because CR and RC courses teach teach you 
the logical way of putting your thoughts together. You read a logically constructed argument in CR. You read a logically constructed passage in RC. And and by going by solving those questions, you develop that technique of writing those uh, those kind of um, um, structures yourself. So that's why our students don't really require a whole lot of help with AWA. That's the reason why we don't have a course for that. On the contrary. We noticed that our students were facing issues with how is it that we should analyze our ESR or I, have, I haven't approved what I haven't improved in my um, in my attempt what should I do and when when we saw such questions appear time and again that's when in last um, July August time frame we created a separate standalone GMAT strategy team that can field these questions and that can give you responses um, as soon as you face those problems we created. Um, this set of videos that help you uh, solve, uh, that help you navigate through the course in the right way. So as you join the course, you basically time and again get uh, get feedback from the system that okay, this is how you should be going through the course. So again, um, yeah. So I hope that answers the question. I've given you a pretty long answer to that. All right. So I think that's about it. Um, any other questions that you may have, please feel free to um, to get to, to write to us at pyle.edashima.com or support.edashima.com. And one more thing that I will uh, leave you guys with is that, um, um, yeah, I think um, prepare well. That's what I would say. Prepare well. Ask questions. Don't don't think that you're you are in this journey alone. Any questions that you have, there is no question that is a stupid question. Okay, um, the the wrong thing to do is not ask the question. So definitely ask the right question. Ask the questions. Uh, we will we ask, we uh, we have we have a full blown team of uh, experts standing by to respond to your questions. We want to help you get successful. Okay, all right then. Wish you all the very best and uh, yeah, we'll take it from there. Bye bye.